Have you ever bought something that works but could have been so much better? That's the case with most of these game boxes. The game itself is great, but they don't spend much time on the organization. In this video, we're going to do something about that by transforming this basic game box into a clean, organized showcase, cutting the setup time of this game way down. So stick around. This game is a good example of what you might see with a lot of games. And it works, the pieces all fit, but it has so much more potential. So let's see what we're working with and how we can make this a lot better. We have two stacks of cards, two sets of coins, the $5 and the $1. There are some random game pieces with different shapes and two sets of instructions. And of course the camel pieces. All of the pieces seem to be made of a high quality material and the coins have a nice feeling to them as well. The idea here is to make it so that everything has a place and it stays there. And while we're solving issues with this box, some of these solutions will hopefully work for some other games with a small tweak to the size. I like the idea of modular systems, pieces that can be easily swapped out and changed without having to remake everything. So that's the direction I'd like to go. Fusion 360 is what I'm using here and it has a cool feature to arrange pieces on a sheet. For something like this though, it isn't really needed. It's still fun to play around with and it's probably good for a project with a lot more small pieces. So taking a look at the box, the first thing we need to do is remove the spacer. That's going to be valuable real estate. I think I'm going to need two layers and on the top layer, I think we can have two containers, one for each of the coins and they're each going to have their own lids. But how about we make them dual purpose as well? They're also going to act as the coin trays and we'll design them so that there are no sharp corners, making pulling those coins out super easy. Now with these containers being so short, they don't have a lot of flex to them. The snaps need to be very small and that way we can actually get the lids off. So we're going to print two of these trays that are basically the same and the entire top layer is complete. For the cards themselves, each is going to have a little storage tray and we can add a cutout as well to make it easy to remove the cards. Now, I took the universal card box that I designed in the last video and just repurposed it here for these. If you want to check out that video, it's in the top corner. I'm a little short for space in the height because of the instruction manuals, so no lids on these ones. For the random game pieces, I'll do the same container idea, but this time with no lid. Nice swooping corners as well and again, no top. Everything on this layer is going to need to finish off at close to the same height as well. And now for the hardest one, and it's tough because I didn't want to settle for something that was simple and rectangular to hold these. I really wanted something to hold them in position exactly, so each of them has their place. And I tried tracing the outline, removing the background, and converting it to a DXF, but that wasn't working at all. It just kept crashing on me. I ended up using a tracing from just one camel and then drawing the outline in Fusion 360 and then I spaced them out manually in the software. I offset the lines around the perimeter to give me a little bit of slop just in case the sketches weren't perfect and then I extruded the rest. Now in case these were a little bit tight I added slots at the bottom just to pop them out and I only extruded these partially. The tops are going to finish off at the same height as the rest of the layer now and it'll help to remove the camels and also help to remove the other trays from the box. I printed these on my Bamboo Lab X1 carbon printer and full disclosure, this printer was sent to me to test out, but the results speak for themselves. The quality is exceptional. Having the AMS here also helps to add some personality to these. Now because that first layer is so important with adding color, I always slow that one down. All of the other layers are printed at full speed. And i found that I get even better results when I'm printing PLA, when I add a brim and a zero millimeter offset. It just helps to keep everything as flat as possible for as long as possible. So let's compare the original versus the new and see how everything works.
Now the only thing I would change is the height of the card trays and the rest of the layer of course to follow, but I'm super happy with this, the coin trays especially. It isn't going to be quite as good as these applewood token bowls that I made, but it's not too far off. This would also look awesome in black with some accents as well. Now I just need to learn how to play the game. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything you would improve with this in the comments. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I'm trying to release a new video each week and your support will help this channel to grow. And I wanted to say a special thanks to my patrons for helping to support the channel. Felix Hummel, Jeff Heiler, Mikhail Wheelock, and Cody Tyrrell. And if you'd like to become a patron to see more behind the scenes and interact with me one-on-one, -on -one, please check the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy the video. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.